So this morning we're in the shop milking. It is not ideal to milk in here because it's a dirty old shop. But we are milking with our um, our milk machine. It's a hand milk machine, but our milk machine. So I can keep stuff sterile. We have stuff to wash her with. And this is Azora's first freshening. Look at this. So here's our, our cleaner and our water. That's what we already got out Shelly today. Azora's eating her food. And she has a nice bag. It's a pretty good bag for a first freshener. She stands, if she's hard to get on the milk stand, but once we get her on, then she does pretty good. So here we go, and I'll show you how much milk we get from her. So since I started milking the goats, I have got some goat's milk. Um, we've been feeding the puppies with part of it, but then I have some left over since I'm milking. I'm just milking in the mornings because um, I don't need to up their production right now. So I'm going to make some farmer cheese. I have a gallon here. This is a half gallon and another half gallon. So um, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shake it a little bit because the fat, cream, whatever, comes to the top. That is very full. You can make this also by the half gallon. But since I have a gallon and it's summer and I don't like using my stove very often, I'm going to go ahead and make um, a gallon. See? Can you see that? That's all the cream that came to the top, so I'm going to shake this one a little bit better. There's not a lot of air in there to get it shook up. Good. There we go. That's better. I'll probably still have cream around the side, which is great to be able to shake up and use because that is what makes your cheese. There's all that cream. So I'm going to turn this on. My stove is a little cantankerous. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. To a medium to low because I do not want this coming up to heat too fast. And I'll get my thermometer out and start okay so here's my milk my thermometer and I'm gonna stick it on the pot make sure that it goes down into the milk itself I'm gonna want to get it at 190 degrees I'm also using a plastic spoon I love my wooden like the flat spoon thing the spatula thing that's what I like the best but I broke mine so whew. So I'm going to kick the camera stand and uh, and I'll be stirring with, with that. So I'll just give it a stir because I just turned it on. Nothing sticking to the bottom so we don't have any scorched milk because that would be gross. We are going to get this up to 190 degrees. I don't know if you can see that thermometer or not. There we go. So we're going to get it up to 185-190 um, is good enough. There we go. Another way you can tell it's time to stir it is it will form a thin layer on top and um, you know it's time to be stirred. It's now at 124.5. Okay, I'm going to show you what the film is like I'm talking about. You know it's time to stir. See that little film on top? Go ahead and stir it and it looks like what does that say? About 150? It's 
since we're getting close, I'll go ahead and add my vinegar. I want one cup. Let's see, Get back there so you can see where the one cup is. So I can see where the one cup is. So I just used some distilled white vinegar. As it gets warmer, you need to stir more often. Some people use a whisk, which is fine. I just don't get the corners very good when I use a whisk. So we're still about 155 now. Maybe it's just me, but at this point, it goes so slow that I want to scorch, so I stir more often. At the same time, it's like the thermometer does not move. Another way to tell if you don't have a thermometer is just before it gets to a rolling boil, it will get frothy on top. And we are at 180. We're getting there. Okay, we're at about, let's see, that would be 75, 80, about 85. So not long now, guys. And you can see, if you look up here, how it's starting to get frothy on top. You know it's getting really close when it gets all frothy. It is almost there. Okay, we are going to say it is now up to our 190. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And I'm going to remove this baby. It's not too hot. From the heat. Okay, so I removed it from the heat. I'm going to remove the thermometer. Then I'm going to take my vinegar. I'm just going to slowly pour it in there and mix it around real well. And um, almost immediately you can see it starts separating. I don't know if you can see that, but it all it starts separating right away into curds. I just want to make sure it's stirred in there really well. And then I'm going to completely leave it alone for 15 minutes. I'll go ahead and set my Timer for because I get distracted. So I'll see you back in about 15 minutes. So while we're waiting, I'll show you what I've done. Move you over here. I have a colander and a really big bowl. And so I have a, a you can use cheesecloth, but I like the um, dish towels, like the flour sack dish towels. Um, I you lose less curds that way, and I just prefer it. It's more sturdy and easier to wash. So here we go. I'm going to pick this up. We'll be able to see the nice curds. I'm going to move this a little closer here. I do this every time. I'll get it close enough. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to end up dumping the whole thing. But I like taking the... Um, that way this out first so it doesn't uh, splash all over me. I am not the neatest person, so whatever I can do to make it less messy, I usually do that. So I'm going to tap that off. Set it back there. Clean my stove. I'm going to go ahead 
and just pour that in. That's why you want a great big bowl. Let me make sure this bowl is good. Because you're going to have a lot of whey. The, the liquid coming off is whey. So your curds or your cheese, you know, like the Miss Muffet, or curds and whey. So that would be like cottage cheese, curds and whey. So I like to let it drain a little bit by itself. So when I squeeze it out, it's easier to do. And the heat doesn't bite me. But I'll go ahead and push the sides down. Whoops. See, so right now it looks like cottage cheese. Actually, what I forgot to tell you is right now is when I want to go ahead and add some seasoning, if I'm going to put any, and um, salt. So I'm going to use, actually I got, this is Redmond salt. Oh, there we go. I got it, <laughs> this little one, at the um, Oki Homesteading Expo. They were giving them out. Redmond was there. And what you want is a non-iodized salt, so that is non-iodized. And then I, my family really likes, we can agree on this flavor, it's the Mediterranean herb. Uh, we really like it. A lot of times I'll just put Italian seasoning in it and use that on my salads, because it's really good. This, this has a really good flavor, um, and we can all agree on it. I like my stuff a little spicy, and <clears throat> most of my family does not. So this one isn't spicy, but really flavorful. So I'll start up and... And I do that before I drain it because see it's still really um, mushy and easy to stir. All that flavor in there. So see it looked like I put a whole bunch in there, but really this... My goats have a good fat content in them. So, they say a, an average is a pound of cheese per gallon of milk, but I will get over a pound out of, out of my gallon. So, that's what it looks like right now. And, um, and by all means, you can eat it at this consistency, but I like to crumble it on salads and such. So, I like to squeeze out all the moisture. So just start taking the corners, putting them together. Oh, that corner's stuck. On the sides. Start folding up. So you can take this and see all the, the way coming out. Now I'll start wringing it, squeezing it, and you can see in here. That's why you want a really big bowl so it doesn't sit in the way. Um, well, this is my setup. So I'm going to set something heavy on this and let it push the pressure, push the liquid out. So in looking for something heavy to set on it, we're just going to use my gallon of vinegar. This is like a... And wait. Okay, so it's set here. I kind of lost track of time. It's probably been like 40 minutes or so. It's still warm. Um, and so I'm going to unfold it, I'm going to take it over here, and you can, you can form it into whatever shape. I'm just going to put it, because since I'm going to use it on salads, I'm going to probably crumble it anyway, but you could fold, you could squeeze it into whatever shape. I'll take that. So here is our cheese, just one side. <clears throat> And uh, I didn't weigh it, but I am going to taste it. That is so yummy. I really do like the seasoning in it. But as far as texture, and once it cools, once I sit there and it cools like this, it will be harder to crumble and rip apart. You can actually slice it. But like right now, you can see the, the texture. It, um... It crumbles, but it's not, it's, you know, kind of has a firmness to it. Anyway, mmm, that's yummy. So, there's just some super easy farmer cheese. I took two ingredients, 
and then if you want to add your um, salt seasonings then you can add that to taste but it's just your milk and then one cup vinegar per gallon of milk so if you do a half cup or a half gallon of milk you just use a half cup vinegar <clears throat> and everything doesn't have to be exact it's not an exact science but because my you saw my jars they were completely full so they're it's probably a little over a gallon and when I pull, poured my vinegar it may have been a little over a cup but anyway so there's my my cheese and that that is over a pound of cheese I could probably weigh it and see I'll do that even though I ate a few little bites <laughs> so this is how I'm gonna put mine in the refrigerator you can like I say you can uh, form it into a ball and or or flatten it I actually have a cheese press I just decided not to use it this time because I'm gonna go ahead and crumble mine because like I say we're gonna have salads tomorrow night and I love this crumbled over a salad it has a very mild taste um, I guess it would depend on your milk if your goat's milk has a really goaty taste I have Nubian and Alpine and um, and I like their milk it's not very goaty or whatever I tasted some goat cheese they were sampling at Sam's one time and it was definitely not my favorite it was very goaty it's like oh yay they have goat cheese I'm gonna taste and um, it was not my favorite so if you've tried store goat cheese and you did not love it then that does not mean you will not love some fresh homemade goat cheese I hear it depends what you feed them also I have another video that shows what I feed my dairy goats and um, and my milk is very mild and rich and has plenty of fat so that's what I'll save mine in so it was a nice nice amount I have a family of six and that'll be plenty to put on our salads and probably a little leftover oh and here is the whey and you can use that in soups or they say it's great in bread making I do not make my own bread but I have I have quite a bit of whey here and um, it has lots of good nutrients in it and so I will probably use some of it and use some of it in dressing the dog food so they can have some nutrients